now. So we're going to talk about a story that has attracted lots of attention. We've done a lot of it on BBC Breakfast. Really matters to people. This public consultation into standing charges closes today. They are the fixed daily fees applied to energy. Ben's going to tell us loads more about this. Ben, morning. Morning. Yeah, that cold weather Matt was just talking about, it puts energy bills at the very front of people's minds and the high cost of those bills and standing charges are all a part of that. Let me uh, explain. Uh, one of the highest response rates so far to an off-gem consultation. Little wonder, given how high energy bills are at the moment. And it's the standing charges that many experts say hit the people from poorer households the hardest. Now, such was the concern over those that the energy regulator launched a review of them back in November. More than 20 1,000 responses have been received so far. The consultation closes later today, so you've still got time to get your views in. And Ofgem will then decide on its next steps. Let me just remind you, though, what the standing charges are. They are the flat daily, the fixed fees that are charged for a gas and electricity connection to your home. They're added to your bill regardless of how much or how little energy you use. So it's a little bit like the line rental that you pay on a landline phone. And these fees can vary quite significantly depending on where you live and who your supplier is. Now, the charges are supposed to cover so-called non-energy costs that suppliers have to pay to deliver the energy into your home. So it's things like maintaining the network, that's the grid, the cables, the pipes, sending out staff to do meter readings and repairs, even the cost of running call centres. Currently, the average daily standing charge under the price cap is... 53.35 pence per day for electricity, 29.6 pence a day for gas. And with energy costs having gone up this month, it can make a big difference to your final bill, as one pensioner who's even thinking of going back to work told us. We try and control the thermostat. If we feel warm, we turn it down. If we're cold, we will tend to turn it up, but not as much as we used to. It is difficult. I have even thought about getting another job, you know. Well, it provokes lots of questions, uh, not least from the 7.5 million customers who uh, get their energy from British Gas. I'm delighted to say the boss of Centrica, which owns British Gas, joins us, Chris O'Shea. Uh, very warm welcome to the programme, Chris. Thank you very much. We've got so many questions. We'll kick off straight away with one from Becky, who writes on our Facebook page. She says, why don't you scrap standing charges right away? So we called for standing charges to be scrapped in uh, June 2023, so the middle of last year. Um, because we see that those customers that manage their energy use most carefully still have about £300 a year to pay in standing charges. Now, the reason that we can't scrap them is because the prices are really set by Ofgem. So the consultation that Ofgem is concluding today, we welcome. Usually we've made further representations that the standing charge should go and the cost of recovering things like the network maintenance. What you also have in standing charges is the cost of paying for the failed suppliers when the energy market um, had real problems over the last couple of years. That's why one of the reasons that electricity is higher than gas but there was about £4 billion worth of cost to recover. But we think there's a different way where you can change the unit rate so that customers that use less pay a lot less. But if, as you've said in the past, you support the scrapping of standing you charges, do. does that mean that people's unit charges would go up? So they're still paying, but in a different way? Yes, most definitely, because if you look at... So the average price at the moment, um, £1,928 for a customer on direct debit, allows energy re retailers to make about 2%, so about £40 of profit. You've got £300 worth of standing charges, so the unit rate would have to go up to compensate for that. What that would mean is the people that use more would pay more and the people that use less would pay less. That's why often I've gone into a consultation, because it's not, um, it's not as simple as, as saying we simply have no standing charge. Just as you mentioned profits, it's something a lot of people have raised. They say British Gas, that bit of the company alone, made profits of almost a billion pounds in the first half of last year. Yes. Could you not use some of that to ease some of the pressure on people's household bills? So it's, a, it's a great question. We absolutely have. So we, um, in, I think starting in 2022, we committed to paying 10% of the profits from British Gas Energy uh, into funds to support our customers. We've put in just over £100 million so far. Um, voluntary contributions over and above the other things that we have to do as part of our licence condition um, in order to help customers. We've helped... Um, I think over a million customers uh, with uh, direct debt uh, relief or with grants, the grant can be up to £2,000 um, administered by the British Gas Energy Trust. So it's absolutely right that companies do what they can to support customers. What I would say is, though, the way the price cap works is you get lags in terms of when you get the cost. So, so we had a substantial profit, as you say, in the first half of 2023. 
If you look over the life of the price cap of the last four years, our profit margins have been 2% in retailing energy. So they've been exactly as they should have been through the price cap. But you have some years where you make 0.1, 0.2%, and then you have something like the first half of 2023 where you have a huge catch-up. It's regrettable, but it's the way the price cap set by Ofgem works. Uh, Chris, we're always very pleased when a, a, a boss comes and sits with us on the sofa. We're also very pleased when our audience gets in touch and they often ask very direct questions. Yes. This is one from uh, Dean Gagan, who's got in touch, who says, and it goes back to what you're saying a moment ago, if the company pays bonuses and makes large profits, why can a larger percentage of that not go back into the infrastructure? With all that in mind, why are the price for standing charges increasing? You've gone through that. Do you, can you just give us some basics? You're sitting here sure. now. You could be straight with us. How much profit did your company make and how much bonus did you take last year? So, so last year, our profit, our pre-tax profit was £3.3 .3 billion. £3.3 billion. billion pounds. Yeah. That includes about £500 million for the business that we have sold but under accounting rules we had to recognise. So about £2.8 billion. Pounds. Within that British Gas Energy, the energy retail arm made about £150 million. Pounds. Now, in terms of the infrastructure, we don't actually own any of the gas or the electricity infrastructure in the UK. It's a, it's a common misconception where people think British Gas own the gas pipelines. So we don't own any pipelines, we don't own any infrastructure. We produce gas, we store gas, we produce electricity, we store electricity, and we sell that to customers. OK, there was a second part of that sure. question, is your bonuses. Yes. So my pay last year was £4.5 million. Pounds. And that is a salary or is that a bonus? No, no, that's a salary, that's a bonus and a long-term share scheme. When you say those words, and you've, you've been very honest with us, and we sure. appreciate that, you've said it straightforwardly, and you know that there are people watching this who are struggling to pay their bills, mm. maybe to your company, what goes on in your head? So, look, it's, um, it's a huge amount of money. I am incredibly fortunate. I don't set my own pay. That's set by a remuneration committee. Um, and a number, that's the first bonus that I'd taken in my time in Centric. In a number of years, I'd, I'd given up bonuses because of hardships that customers were facing. I thought it was right that we put a lot of our money, a lot of our profits into supporting customers. Um, but it's, you can't justify a salary that, uh, of that size. It's, um, Can you say that again? You cannot. You, say you, you can't justify it. No, you can't because it's a huge amount of money to, to anybody looking at this. It's a huge amount of money. OK, if, if you say you can't justify it, I mean, with the best one in the world, and I'm trying to be straight with you, mm. why take it? I suppose for the same reason that, I mean, if you look, the average wage in the UK is about £30,000. All of us sitting here on this sofa will make substantially more than £30,000. Um, it's not for me to set my own pay. Um, it's not for you to set your own pay. But you've got to recognise that when you've got people that are struggling, like the customer we saw there struggling for payments, or I look at my mum who's in the basic state pension, it's just impossible to justify, so there's no point in trying to do that. Um, you've acknowledged that compared to... Average pay, you're yeah. paid very, very well. Absolutely. You are, you say you are um, mindful of this. I'd really like to talk to you about vulnerable customers. Yes. Now, you, of course, will be aware that agents for British Gas were exposed last year for force-fitting metres into homes. Yes. Ofgem clamped down on that, complete ban on that. The, the rules are changing now so that those who are vulnerable over the age of 75, it is not allowed yeah. to be done. What can you do and have you done it in terms of force-fitting repayment metres. When, when are you allowed to do it? So the, we, there was a ban put in place by Ofgem um, after the unacceptable practices that were, that were uncovered. Um, that ban has now been lifted, but companies have to show that they have certain policies, procedures and practices in place. We haven't applied to Ofgem to be cleared to do that, so we have not restarted uh, fitting prepayment metres. We do fit prepayment meters for customers who request, and we've got about two million customers who are on prepayment meters. We haven't restarted. Some other companies have restarted. Okay, and I can say I can. I've, we've looked at that. So um, EDF has said it will restart. Yeah. Octopus, for example, another of your rivals has said it has no plan. So are you saying now? Because I couldn't find what British mm. Gas's stance was. Are you saying now you have no plans to? So we have and no you will not, or it's just that you have no plans at the moment. So we have no current plans just now. So I think you had EDF and Octopus and one other. I think Scottish Power. Scottish, yeah. They all applied for permission to, to restart, and we have not applied for permission. Will you? Um, I can't say at the moment because what we've got to look at is. How are customers managing to pay their debt? So our bad debt charge went up substantially. I can't tell you about exactly about how much because our failure results are out in February. But they went up hugely. Now, the balance that we've got to get is how do you... In many industries, if you allow customers to run up debt that they cannot repay, 
it would be an offence. You would be in trouble. Your regulator would be Don't calmed you pay down. More yeah. through those meters, your unit charge is more through those meters, isn't it? No, it's lower. Is so, it? So, so it, now it's not materially lower. The fixed. The, I don't understand what that means. It's lower, but not materially so lower. So the. The pre so the price cap for people that pay by direct debit is £1,928 for the average home. Mm -hmm. Under the prepayment metre, it's £1,917. So it's £11 lower. The cheapest um, electricity and gas that you can buy is through prepayment metres, but it's not massively lower. Now, we have called in the past for a social tariff, which means that those that are most vulnerable could pay substantially lower, and those of us, such as us here, that can afford it would pay a higher cost. So you have something where you have a differentiated tariff based on people's ability to pay. Your... At the moment, that's not the case. OK. Um, your overall score, when which um, uh, what the watchdog surveyed more than 9,000 energy customers, you came bottom. British Gas received an overall score 56% um, of the customer of customer scores. Um, Octopus was first. Um, Ecotricity and E second. Then all the rest were third. You were bottom. Mm. So. Firstly, when you look at the which survey, um, the 9,000 customers that were surveyed, we were second of the big six suppliers. We were a bit mid-table overall, um, which then applies subjective no, judgment. Scottish Power, Shell Energy, EDF, E.ON, all above you. Yes, but if you look at... So there's, there's, there's a two-pronged survey. They firstly surveyed 9,000 <coughs> customers. We were second of the six biggest suppliers. We were a bit mid-table from that 9,000 customer survey. There's then a number of other criteria that which apply with the subjective. So, for example, they quoted two cases of customers who transferred over under the supplier of last resort process when other suppliers collapsed. One customer uh, came over from Neon Reef Energy and he, we build them for two properties. Now, the reason we build them for two properties is the data transfer from the bust Neon Reef Energy. Are you saying Energy. that being bottom is just not accurate? Or are you saying, so, or, what, what are you saying acknowledging the, you need to improve? So, we, if we're not number one, we absolutely need to improve. So, if our customer service is not the best, we've, we have hired 700 new customer service agents last year. We've invested more than £25 million uh, in customer service. Because the prices are higher, our customer contacts have gone from £16.8 million in 2021 to £21.9 million. So, we've had more than £5 million additional customer contacts. Our customer service, if it's not number one, I'm not happy with it. My point is, on the survey of the 9,000 customers, we're about middle of the table overall, and we're second of the, of the big six. You may have hired more uh, customer service people. Yes. They're not getting through to Daniel, who's been in touch on WhatsApp, single father on benefits. I currently owe £5,000 for electricity. I have made plenty of contact with them, with you, and asking for help, I have got nowhere. What are you doing for a customer like him? How, how can that be the case? How can, he, how can he not be getting help? So, very difficult for me to comment uh, on... I appreciate you can't talk about the individual, but you said you've yeah. hired lots more people. Something still is not working. So, we, yes, you see, we have, so 20, I think, 21.9 million customer contacts last year. The average wait time on the, on the phone has come down in terms of time to answer, but it's still far too long. long it's, it? it's about four minutes just now. Now, it's come down substantially. As we've hired more people, we've seen that come down. Um, but if you have that customer's details, if you can give them to me, if your producers can give them to me, I'll deal with that issue. We don't get it right every time. But every time I find an issue that we don't get right, I make sure that we fix it. We're not perfect, but we are looking to improve every day. One common theme yeah. across all the messages we've had is how many people are struggling to pay their energy bills, especially at the moment. We hear conflicting things. Looking forward, um, there are forecasts that unit prices will come down from April, and yet we're also hearing that because of the situation in the Red Sea and the Middle East, energy prices could go up. What's your expectation? So if you were to reset the price cap right now, so the, 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 what we call the observation period has got one more month to go. If you reset it right now, energy prices would come down by just over £200. But for the typical household. For the typical household, yeah. Um, now what you also have to remember is that consumers use two-thirds of their energy in winter and one-third in the summer. So you'll see not only the reduction in price, but you'll also see a reduction in consumption. I mean, just now the weather's very cold, people have, have got their, their heating up, so they're spending more, but you'll see um, a, a double benefit for prepayment customers and customers that pay um, when they receive the bill. The problem is there's one more month to go of the observation period. Um, the problems in the Red Sea mean that um, LNG, liquefied natural gas, which comes from Asia, would go through the Suez Canal. So either has to go around the bottom of Africa, adds about 20 days onto the trip, adds substantial cost, or it's just not coming, it's going to Asia. The UK imports 50, 60% of, uh, of its gas. And so if the gas price spikes, then that could cause a real problem. Now, will it erase the reduction? I can't really say because gas prices traditionally have been 40 to 50 pence a therm 
over a 10, 20 year period, they got as high as eight pounds after Russia invaded Ukraine. The thing for us to remember though is the increase in energy prices has not come from the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Energy prices doubled prior to the invasion of Ukraine. Um, and so that's why I don't think we're going to see prices going back to the pre-2020 levels for quite some time. It will require a lot more investment in power generation and in clean gas production. Um, Chris O'Shea, thank you so much thank for coming much. in Thanks and talking me. to us, Boss of Century. Thank yeah, it's you. It's not every day. It should be yeah. said uh, yeah, that a, a sofa, senior it's executive lovely. comes in to sit with us and ask questions. So we do appreciate it. And thank our, you for our, our thank you. audience appreciates it as well, as you can see from the number of questions that came through. So thank you very much.